Shalom everybody. Thank you very much for um, joining these lessons. Uh, today we'll be carrying on on our seven Noahide commandments as we, as we have uh, discussed in the previous uh, videos uh, that uh, we'll be going through this series where we do one mitzvah per week. So this week we'll be covering sexual crime uh, which is part of the seven Noahide commandments. So, to start this, actually, I want us to go and we read the book of uh, Leviticus chapter 18. Um, I'll be reading from Tanakh, uh, the stone edition here. So I want us to quickly go there. So in the book of Leviticus, uh, it starts by saying, Hashem spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to B'nai Israel and say to them. And maybe one might ask, uh, might, might, might ask a question and say, But is this not strictly for the Jews? What is going to be outlined in this chapter? Um, let me say, it also applied to B'nai Noach, what we're going to read here from verse 1 until the last verse of this chapter, you'll see that it also applied to B'nai uh, Noach. But just to maybe to co convince you a bit that it applies also to B'nai Noach, not only to B'nai Israel, let's read first few verses and verse 26, 7 also. Let's read it. It says here, Hashem spoke to Moshe saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am Hashem your God. Do not perform the practice of the land of Egypt in which you were in which you dwelt, and do not perform practice of the land of Canaan to which I bring you. Let me just stop there. You can see that whatever that is going to be outlined in this chapter are the practices that are forbidden for B'nai Israel. And these very same practices that are forbidden, they were practiced in Egypt, and also the Canaanites are practicing these uh, uh, things. But let's find out, are they only forbidden for the Israelites and not for any other nation? Let's go to verse 27. And verse 27 says, for Maybe let's start 24. Do not become contaminated through any of this, for through all of this, the nations that I expel before you became contaminated. So we can already see that there was an expect expectation uh, from Hashem uh, towards uh, the Canaanites. He expected certain behavior from them, and they failed. And in fact, when we carry on here, it says, it says the land became contaminated and they and I recalled its iniquity upon it and the land vomited or disgorged its inhabitant. So we can see that God removed the Canaanites because of this. This was another reason why God removed the Canaanites from the from the land because of these practices. And remember Canaanites are not they are not Israelites are not uh, Jews. And they were removed because there was certain expectation, certain behavior that was expected of them. However, they failed to live according, I believe, to the oral tradition, oral laws that were given to Noah and that was passed through generation to generation. And God cannot expect from anyone anything that it was not in, he was not informed of before. So God informed the, 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 the people here on earth that you, can, you cannot partake in these behaviors. And therefore, when you go against that, God can then come and judge you for those actions. So we can see here that God expected the Canaanites not to practice uh, those kind of behavior that they were practicing in Canaan. Egyptians also had this 
uh, bad practices. However, because the land Eretz Israel, it's a holy land. They were vomited out. They were disgorged. It's, you see, it's different from Egypt. Egypt were not removed from that land because it's not Eretz Israel. The other one is Eretz Israel. And because Eretz Israel is holy, God then visited the iniquities of the land and the land then vomited the Canaanites out. And therefore, God also wants, if you would look at this, it says, verse 28 let not let not the land discourage you for having contaminated it and it discord the nation that was before you so he's warning them the it vomited the canaanites do not follow after the same practices because the land will do the same with you the land will do the same with you in fact there is a let's see i think it's in the book of jeremiah Yes, Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 9 says, So it came to pass through her casual halotry that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and trees. So we can see, we'll see when we continue with this, that uh, B'nai Israel, they also later in the years practiced the very same behavior and the land vomited them out. And so... So I think I've made it clear that these prohibitions that we find in the book of Leviticus, they don't only apply to B'nai Israel, they also apply to B'nai Noah. So let's go and hear what Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 18 has for us. Hashem spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am Hashem your God. Do not perform the practice of the land of Egypt in which you dwelt. Do not perform the practice of the land of Canaan to which I bring you. Do not follow their traditions. Carry out, carry out my laws and safeguard my decrees to follow them. I am Hashem your God. You shall observe my decrees and my laws which men shall carry out and which he shall live. I am Hashem. Now, from verse 6, that's where now we get these uh, prohibitions. Any man shall not approach his clothes relative to uncover, her nakedness, uh, to uncover nakedness. I am Hashem. The nakedness of your father, the nakedness of your mother you shall not uncover. She is your mother. You shall not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of your father's wife you shall not uncover. It is your father's shame. The nakedness of your sister, whether your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, whether you are whether born to you who may remain in the home or born to who must remain outside of, the, of it, you shall not uncover their nakedness. The nakedness of your son's daughter or your daughter's, uh, daughter's daughter you shall not uncover their nakedness for they are your own shame the nakedness of your father's wife uh, uh, the nakedness of your father's uh, wife's daughter who was born to your father she is your sister you shall not uncover her nakedness the nakedness of your father's sister you shall not uncover she is your father's flesh the nakedness of your mother's sister you shall not uncover for she is your mother's flesh. The nakedness of your father's brother you shall not uncover. Do not approach his wife. She is your aunt. The nakedness of your daughter-in-law. The nakedness of your daughter-in-law you shall not uncover. She is your son's wife. You shall not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of your brother's wife you shall not uncover. It is your brother's shame. The nakedness of, your, of a woman and her daughter you shall not uncover, you shall not take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness. They are cl your close relative. It is a, a depraved plot. You shall not take the woman's in addition to her sister to make them rivals to uncover the nakedness of one upon the other in her lifetime. You shall not approach a woman in her time of unclean separation 
do uh, to uncover her nakedness. You shall not lie carnally with your neighbor's wife to contaminate yourself with her. You shall not present any of your children to pass through Molech and do not profane the name of your God. I am Hashem. You shall not lie with a man as, as one lies with a woman. It is abomination. Do not lie with any animal to be contaminated with it. A woman shall not stand before an animal for, for mating. It is perversion. Do not become contaminated through any of this. For through all of this, the nations that I expelled before you became contaminated. The land became contam contaminated and I recalled its iniquity upon it. And the land disgorged its inhabitant. But you shall safeguard my decrees and my judgment and do not commit to any of this abomination. I will stop here. But I think you understand that all these things that have been um, outlined in the book of uh, Leviticus chapter 18, both Bnei Israel and Bnei Noach, they are not supposed to be um, indulging in such uh, practices. As I said before, the Canaanites indulge in such practices and the land of Israel, Eretz Israel, vomited them out. Where they come from in Egypt, they also practice the same. But uh, God is actually saying to B'nai Israel, uh, Israel, do not follow their practices, their abomination. Now let's move on to a very interesting, very famous verse in the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Okay, let me see. It says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and cling to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. It's a very interesting uh, verse here and actually when you you there are many uh, commands or sub commands that we can derive from this verse as we have already explained in the previous chapters the seven laws are actually seven categories of the laws and therefore you can already see under sexual immorality or sex crime we have got many other sub uh, commandments that we find below them and uh, so let's read this verse carefully it says therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and cling to his wife and they shall become one flesh so there are few things that you can learn from this verse and one the first one it says therefore a man shall leave his father in fact when you 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 read uh, a Jewish tradition they will explain it to you that when it says therefore a man shall leave his father it refers to his father's wife and then it says and his mother so you might be asking yourself but it says here mother and you the mother will be the the wife to the father not necessarily it's possible that uh, the wife the, the, the father of the man might have been married to another woman who is not the mother to this man and therefore that's why the bible is very clear so when it comes to the mother it's simple meaning like that that it refers to the mother meaning this man cannot approach his father's wife whether that's it's his mother or not you cannot approach and then that's number one uh, number two is do not uh, you you leave your mother okay do not have such thoughts towards your mother do not have such thoughts towards your father's wife right and then the other one would be uh, let's see it says um, and therefore shall, it says and cling to his wife and so you hear very well that, that it says, and this man shall cling to his wife. So the third thing that we learn from this is um, uh, you do not cling to other people's wife. You cling to your wife. 
And therefore, be very careful that you leave other people's wife. Cling to your own wife. The very same thing that we get from this cling to your wife is does not say cling to another man. A man shall leave his father and his mother and cling to his wife. And therefore, we already see the prohibition against um, uh, 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 what you call men getting married to another man. A man cling to his wife, does not cling to another man, does not cling to husband. He clings to his wife. And they shall become one flesh. They become fleshes. This union is capable and can also be able to bring children to this earth. And therefore you already see this a, a double emphasis on you as a man cannot be seen with another man. Now already that we are talking about um, homosexuality, let's, let's go back. Let's actually look at the book of, uh, the one that we read, the book of, 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 of Leviticus, um, Leviticus chapter uh, 18 verse 22, it says, you shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. A male is forbidden to engage in sexual intercourse with another male, whether an adult or a minor of any, of, of any age. So we can see that the Bible is clear. I mean, can it get clearer than this? The Bible is clear you shall not uh, engage in sexual intercourse with another man. And so we already see that uh, the Canaanites and the Egyptians used to have this kind of relations where a man will get married to another man, where a woman will get uh, married to another woman, and that is abomination according to Hashem according to the Torah. What about, another thing that we find here is it was not only men who was getting married to another man, but also women. They will then, you know, an, a woman will get married to another woman or lie with another woman. And that is abomination. We know that those were the practices of Egyptians. Those were the practices of the Canaanites. And therefore, we need to distance ourselves from such behavior. Uh, okay, let's carry on. Bestiality, we have, we have already covered it in when we looked at Leviticus chapter 18, verse 23, that says, do not have sexual relations with an animal and defile yourself with it. A woman must not present herself to an animal to have sexual relations with it. That is perversion. Bestiality, it's out. Can you imagine the Canaanites and Egyptians who were engaging in this kind of behavior, this kind of practices? What about transgender? Very interesting one as well. Um, you might have seen the news. Uh, I think I saw it earlier today or is it yesterday where uh, a transgender man um, was part of uh, a competition. I think it was swimming competition. I can't remember clearly, but he, 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 he came position one. He won, right? And he was swimming with women. And he's a trans... Can you imagine that? But let, let me put it in perspective. Let me say I wake up and say, I'm a child. I'm a child. And, and you look at me like a grown man like you, and like, no. Do not disrespect me. I'm a child. And therefore, you need to respect what I say to you. Have respect. I'm a child. And I go and uh, enter uh, what tournament or something where I am, I am uh, you know, I've, I've, there are kids there that I'm competing with. And I come number one. Will, will people be proud of me, though? Do you see how far this thing can go? What we learn is, no matter what you do to change yourself, to the eyes of Hashem, you are still who you are. That does not change who you are. You can go change things, remove this and put that, but that does not change who you are. 
So we have covered all these uh, things and uh, rape also. We as men are not allowed to force ourselves to women. Women are not allowed to force themselves to men. In fact, let me take it little bit, one step further. You as a married man, you're not allowed to force yourself into your wife. It is a rape. It is not permitted. Do not force yourself into your woman. Even if she is your wife, you're not allowed. And uh, adultery. Uh, let's see ad uh, adultery. Let's go to Genesis chapter 20, verse 3. It says, But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed, you are a dead man because you are a woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. Even though uh, Abraham lied. God appeared to the king and says, you do not do that. Let's go again to Genesis chapter 39 verse 9. It says, there is no one greater in the house than I. Is it this one? Okay. No has kept back anything from me but you because you are his, his wife. How, can, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? You can see, even during those days, the kings of the of other nations they understood clearly that it is an abomination it is a wickedness for you to uh, to take someone's wife it is forbidden forbidden run away from other men's wife cling to your wife and your wife alone okay on prostitution, let's read Leviticus chapter 19 verse 29 says, Do not prostitute your daughter to cause her to become a harlot, lest the land fall into, the, into harlotry, and the land become full of wickedness. And um, uh, Genesis chapter 38 verse 15 says, When Judah saw her, he thought she was a harlot because she had covered her face. So what I can say to you is, it is forbidden for Gentiles or B'nai Israel to, to practice this kind of sexual immorality. We have to run away from this kind of behavior. I think today I will just end it here. I think we have covered a lot. Maybe one more verse on halotry is Proverbs chapter 23 verse 27 says, For a halot is a deep pit. And a seductress is a narrow world. I think it's clear. I think it's clear. And um, please let's um, let's follow the the laws of Hashem. Let's live a righteous life, so that we be we may be called the righteous Gentiles, the the righteous of other nations. And let's. Be an example to other people by the way we conduct ourselves, the way we speak, the way we conduct our business. Let us be an example to others. Let's not talk a lot, but let's lead by our actions. I thank you.